Welcome back to another Verses That Shape Us, where we're exploring, where we're hearing from our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ as they share stories, as they share scriptures with us, how God has been active, how God has done things in their life. If you've been around St. Luke very long, you've at least heard of the name Mary Jean. Some of you know her very well as a teacher here, as a person who's done everything that there has been and could be any position, Mary Jean's done it. But today we get to see, we get to hear from her some verses that have shaped her. And I hope and pray that as you listen to her, as you see her, that you would see her genuine love, her genuine heart, but most of all, the genuine faith that God has given to her that she so desperately desires for you and for all people to have. So here is Mary Jean Montague and the verses that has shaped her. My name is Mary Jean Borer Montague. Um, I was placed here by the Board of Assignments in the Missouri Senate in 1956. At that time, women teachers were not given a call. We were only given contracts. I was the first second teacher in the school. Mr. Nickel was the principal who taught in the old school. He had more than 50 children in one room. Pastor Lewis Kaufman um, told the congregation that he needed help. So I was the help that was placed here. I met my husband, Donald Montague, a lifelong member here at St. Luke. We were married in 1960. So therefore, I stayed in this congregation. But in the 1970s, Synod changed. They ruled differently, and now teachers, women teachers, were given a call. So after 25 years of teaching here at St. Luke, Pastor Barry said, I think it's time you get a call. So I taught um, here 45 consecutive years. Some of those were, um, we created a kindergarten and I taught nine and 12 weeks. Um, and at that time there was no kindergarten at all. And then from then on, I went back to kindergarten in first and second one year, then first and second and first grade. And I retired in 2001. All right, whenever you're ready. Well, when I was given this assignment, um, I looked back and thought about when I did the camera for other people. And I often thought, oh, it's strange. They only have, um, they want more than one verse. Well, I'm on the other side of the camera this time, and I figured out I need more than one verse, too. And I have problems reading now because I have some macular degeneration, so I will be reading those verses um, carefully, hopefully, and explaining um, how they um, shaped my life. I found my confirmation um, verse, and it was interesting. I found my confirmation booklet also. It was given to me by my confirmation pastor, Emil Spouty. And this is what it is from Psalm 111, verse 10. And this is King James. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. I had always wanted to be a teacher. And uh, when I was in confirmation, Pastor Spouty and my mother said, okay, if you want to be a teacher, you're not just going to be a regular teacher. You're going to be a Lutheran teacher. And I was so uh, blessed um, to have that advice. I went to Concordia St. Paul, Minnesota, and I did become a Lutheran teacher. And of course, as I said before, then I was only placed, not called, but I was called eventually. The next verse... Um, is something that I grew up with in liturgy in, um, in the uh, Missouri Synod. We have beautiful, the 1941 hymnal. And um, this is from Psalm 51, verses 10 to 12. And this is actually the King James, and this is how we used to sing this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. These are verses from, as I said before, from the liturgy that I grew up with. Uh, we sang this right after the pastor's sermon, and it would be uh, a prayer asking God to help us through that following week to do exactly uh, what um, the pastor had talked about. 
And then when I was 16, it was a lot of fun to be able to, as an organist, I, w I started playing the organ at 16, to be able to play this and to lead the congregation in, uh, in singing this part of the liturgy. I miss that, and someday I hope we can do um, go back to that verse, um, that verse again sometime, and do it in um, in the church service. Then I was thinking further. Well, there's another verse, and that's Joshua 24:15, and the very last part of that verse. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When Donald and I were married, um, and we were married in um, my home church in Minnesota and our pastor was Theodore Krensky. And he, he really wanted to make sure he made an impression because we had about a 15 minute sermon. And, but he, he used this as the basis for the sermonette. And this was something that has um, just guided and directed our family throughout the, the years. Then um, I had, had one more, I just couldn't cut off. Um, and that one is Psalm 23. And um, this is the King James. I'll just read some, just the beginning of this is how I memorized it. And I'm sure many of um, many all parishioners also have memorized the, the King James. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. All of these are, are from King James. And um, I have to tell you a little story about that. When uh, my mom and dad were married, um, my dad had neither been baptized nor confirmed. And for many years, um, mom was the witness. And um, there in the, the congregation that um, my mom grew up in, um, there was a, a brand new pastor just out of the seminary. And he took my dad one-on-one. -on -one. And my dad, I remember at age six, I remember watching. So the little white church in Wyndham, Minnesota, I remember my dad being baptized and confirmed on that particular day. And from then on, dad became a spiritual leader uh, in our household. And he made sure that us kids got to go to Sunday school. He took us to church on Sunday. Um, we had, in those days, youth group was called Walther League. And we had a super time. Um, Dad would take us and wait for us because we lived 11 miles from church. And out, we lived on a farm in the country. And Wyndham was a, a big town in those days for us, probably 2,000 people. And um, Sometimes um, I would practice, um, and when I was 16, I started practicing the organ. Dad would drive me in, wait two hours while I practiced, and drive back home, and then go back Sunday morning and take me back again. And um, on the day uh, my dad um, became quite ill, he had um, a kidney um, failure, and I went back and forth a couple of times um, to Minnesota. Um, I was teaching at the time, and I had some wonderful people that came in to substitute for me and took over my classroom and so I could um, could be there. We even took my dad to Rochester, to uh, Minnesota, to the um, Mayo Clinic, and there was nothing that could be done. So eventually, um, dad got became very ill, and we were there. And um, the doctor, uh, we, we were around the bed because we in the hospital, and we knew dad was near death. And um, it was the doctor, my mother, my sister and brother-in-law, and Donald and I. And as dad was leaving this earth, we, uh, no one rehearsed us, nobody um, had even mentioned it. We just began saying, and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, the, Lord, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And um, it was awesome. Um, to be able to see um, my dad um, just leaving this earth. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, and that was um, because he was, um, had not been a Christian, but died as a Christian. And the pastor was uh, later, or even before that, and dad was in a coma, and our pastor came in to uh, pray, and dad groaned. So we know 
that the last thing that leaves is your hearing. So this was very important to know that even though um, we were, he knew that we were there. As you hear these um, verses and the stories that I've um, given to you in, in this very short little uh, video, I, I want you to know how important it is that you read um, each day, that you pray each day. Prayer is so important and take time. Don't put it off and think, oh, I don't have the right words or I can't, can't do that. You can. All you need to do is just talk like you're talking to your child, to your father, to your mother. In fact, you are talking to your father, your father in heaven. So let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come to you, Holy Trinity, and, and we just thank you for the word that you put into our lives. We ask you to help us to study, to learn, and to digest all of, of the things that you want us to hear in Scripture. Help us to continue to be the servants you want us to be. But also, Lord, um, we just ask you to help us to um, be able to have that closer relationship with you daily. Help us to know you, love you, and honor you in our lives, all our lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen.